Namaskar, everyone. I'm really happy to be here right now. Um, I'm in uh, British Columbia, Canada on the West Coast. I live on the Sunshine Coast. Uh, it's beautiful. We've got the mountains are behind us and we just live just maybe 200 meters from the ocean. Um, so we're surrounded by uh, nature and beauty and we've had a really beautiful springtime here. And so I'm just, I'm happy to share with everybody a little bit about Kirtan and um, <clears throat> I was thinking to to share a little bit about my story, about how I um, came to Ananda Marga and mostly how that, um, how Kirtan is, is, uh, has been an influence and has been a big part of that journey for me. Sorry, you can't see my guitar. I should have planned that. This is Jubert Kirtan. Baba Namo Kevalam 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 Baba Namo Kevala 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 Mo Baba Namo Kevala Baba Namo Kevala Mo Baba Namo Kevala Baba Namo Kevala Mo Baba Namo Kevala 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 Mo Baba Namo Kevala So that kirtan, um, the chord, it's really simple. It's just G. Baba Namo Kevala Mo And then C. Baba Namo Kevala Baba Namo Kevala Mo Baba Namo Kevala And the second part is D Baba Namo Kevala Mo Baba Namo Kevala Baba Namo, let's D Kevala Mo, C Then G Baba Namo Kevala So for me, um, one of the things when I'm playing kirtan that I've um, 
something that I've realized over the years is that if we sing, if we really sing kirtan with, with an open heart and with longing and with intention and with focus, every single time you sing Baba listens, God listens, the universe responds. Um, and I feel that sometimes when we sing, we're not, maybe we're not focused, we're thinking about something else. And I think in those situations, there's still benefit. There's, there's always benefit to singing um, Bhavanam Kevalam or sacred mantras. But when we sing with love and with ideation, with that desire, that yearning to really kind of create that link between you and the divine, it, that channel is always open. It's always available. Um, and I've come to that place from so many different parts of myself. Sometimes we come into that love from a place of anger or from sadness, from joy. It's all different facets of the diamond. And in the, in the center is that divinity, that love. And Bhavanam Kevalam is like that, that link that just brings you into that place of love. And, um, yeah, some, sometimes, you know, people ask, you know, how, how to sing Kirtan properly or how to play. And definitely there's a lot of technique involved. Um, but to be completely honest, I'm not that person to like teach the technical aspects of it. Um, for me, I feel like when my voice is really sweet is when, when I'm feeling that love and that connection. Um, and then the sweetness comes because of that love and because of that surrender and that feeling, you know, of divine, um, just expansion. Um, so I was thinking, I was trying to think about what to share and I was thinking to take you on a little bit of a journey, um, and just share a little bit about my story and, um, how I came to Ananda Marga, um, and I was thinking about that this morning a little bit. And I thought, you know, bringing you all the way back. I, I was actually born in Saskatchewan, which is a province in Canada. Um, and it's plains. It's just flat. Um, and the winters are cold. And the summers are really hot. But the winters are harsh. Um, and I, I remember a few things from when I was really little. Um, that, that I can see now as being, you know, kind of building, building blocks to, to where I am now, to who I am now. And I remember I always wanted to expand my circle. I always wanted, I, I remember this feeling from when I was three, four five years old is that if my parents told me. I had to stay within a certain perimeter. If I couldn't cross the street, I had to cross the street. There was this feeling inside of me that I had to push further. And I remember when I was little, I was, cause I was only, I lived in Saskatchewan until grade two. So I would have been in kindergarten or grade one. I remember still walking through the neighborhood and, and exploring places I've never been before. And, and, and it just keep, I kept going further and further until I would find myself sometimes in a situation where I didn't know how to get home. And, um, I still remember that like, and, and trying to then find my way back to the house. Um, and there was just this feeling inside of me when I was little that, that, that feeling of expansion, um, of just widening my circle. And I feel like that's been a theme through my life. And I, that's a big part of Kirtan also is when we sing Kirtan, we're expanding our circle of love. Sometimes we don't even know how big it's becoming. We're just, we just sing and that, that circle is just getting bigger and bigger and just, it, it embraces beyond what we can even, I think what we can understand with our minds. Um, I remember another little incident when I was little, <clears throat> it was, it was in December. It was actually the day my, brother Ryan was born, um, and, uh, and it was in the middle of a blizzard 
and I, and I, uh, <clears throat> my school playground was near our house and it was, and in Saskatchewan, the winds, they blow so strong in the winter time and the wind was blowing and, and it was, it was a blizzard and there was snow and you could hardly see a few feet in front of you. But I remember standing out there in the field thinking that I know that I can fly and I kept, I kept running and jumping to see if I could fly. And I kept falling into the snow and, and to this day, this huge gust of wind all of a sudden came and I ran and I jumped and I flew and I know that I flew and it was just for a split moment, but I felt that, that wind, that invisible force just carry me. And, um, and that like that feeling stuck with me actually, um, even till now. And I remember going to the hospital that day, my brother was born and, and, uh, trying to tell my parents what happened and everyone just was smiling. So, yeah. Um, but I knew in my heart that it happened. So anyways, but, so then, um, <clears throat> kind of fast forwarding, I grew up in a small town, um, in Ontario, in the eastern side of Canada, we moved there in grade in my second grade, and um, it was a small farming community. And I went to school there, and we didn't have a music program in our school. All we had was vocal music, so I never learned to play music, but I always loved music. And um, and then when I got to high school, suddenly we went to high school in the city. And, um, and there was a music program there and everyone knew how to read music and I didn't know how to read sheet music, but I wanted to play music so bad. Um, and I, I just, I would always just hang around the music room, even though I didn't know how to play. Um, but I, then I started learning how to play the guitar, um, just taught myself how to play. And, um, I started joining like the vocal, um, jazz group. And I remember in my, I think, 10th year, um, the grade nine class, this, this one guy came with, he had long hair and he was, he was a musician and he was the most amazing musician. And he was also, um, there was something about him. I, I just noticed like I, there was something about him. His name was Alex. And, uh, and he, I remember he could play the piano, he could play the drums, he could play like every instrument. I thought, wow, this is amazing. This guy's incredible. And I was never, I wasn't really friends with him, but we were kind of, we were in the arts kind of community in the school. And then, um, fast forward to the 12th grade. This is my last year of high school. Um, I really started hanging out with with Alex and, um, and a whole bunch of uh, his friends and we became really close friends and everybody played music. And so I loved like just hanging out with them. And, um, and, uh, and I remember Alex used to sometimes at nighttime, we would, you know, we'd have a party with all of our friends and all of a sudden Alex would just disappear and he'd be gone and no one would know where he was. And I just, I always thought, wow, it's so strange. Like this guy is, it's like, he's a mystery almost. And I'd find out later that he, you know, he just walk by himself in the night and, um, and then end up at his house with his headphones on, just playing the keyboard. And, um, and so it was the last, it was the end of high school and, um, we were having a graduation party. And, and that night I had an experience of, of feeling the presence of God for the first time in my life. And, um, and I felt this invisible presence that filled me. And, and at that point, you know, I didn't really understand spirituality or religion. I didn't know what was happening, but it was so strong that it moved me to, to search for that feeling again, to, to kind of, to try to find that. And so the next day, actually, I moved out of my parents' house and started this long, this journey of like trying to find 
that feeling, trying to experience that again. I ended up coming to the West Coast and left all my friends behind in Ontario and and um and I think, you know, I discovered quickly that through music I was able to somehow connect with that. And I had a lot of experiences and a lot of different met a lot of different people, but I had a guitar and I used to sit in the park and I used to just play I used to play guitar in the park and and I would just sing, but I wouldn't sing anything. I would just like make sounds and because I, I didn't have a mantra. I didn't, but, but I felt like in those moments, sometimes like I would just sit there and sing. I felt that presence would come again. And one day I was sitting in the park and I was singing to God and, um, and I saw this, this guy meditating in the park. And so I went and I talked to him and and uh, I was like, what are you doing? And he, you know, and he said, I'm meditating and I want to learn how to meditate. And, and uh, we became friends. Um, he didn't mention anything about Ananda Marga, but we, we became friends and um, ended up hitchhiking together um, all down through the U.S. Um, and then one morning we were in Arizona and... Uh, he woke up early and I, he went outside and he was meditating again. And, and, um, but I noticed something, it was like, it was, there was a different vibration. And, and now looking back, I think like in my mind, I, I feel like he was doing his Ananda Marga practices, um, because he had been a Margi and then had left. Um, and after he was finished his meditation, he came up to me and he said, he said, I know now I understand. I know why I met you. And he gave me the phone number um, for Dada Shamitananda in Ananda Kanani. He said, you have to go meet this monk there and learn meditation from him. Um, and that day, that was the last day I saw him. He left. Um, anyways, um, there's a lot of things that happened in that whole story. Um, but I did have um, two Baba's dreams, which I'll share one of them. Um, while before I met Ananda Marga, when we were hitchhiking and, um, we were in California actually. And in my dream, I, there was the whole side of the hills of California were all on fire and there was an earthquake and, and everyone was running and panicking. And I was, I was running and panicking, but then I looked to my to my right and there was at that time I didn't know who he was but Baba was running right beside me and when I looked at him all of a sudden I didn't feel any panic or worry or distress and um, and then all of a sudden a tsunami hit and there was a telephone there was like a like a pole and I and I grabbed onto the pole and then Baba came behind me and he put his arms around me and he held me and we held the pole. And then this, the wave, the water hit and it just washed over us. And, and I was fine. I could breathe underwater and Baba was holding me and I felt secure and safe. Um, and I remember I woke up from that dream the next day. We were in California in LA at that time. And I was like, and I, knew, and I was like, who was that? And I felt this this, this feeling like I need to find this person. I need to find this teacher because I was looking for a teacher at the time. Um, and so anyways, I ended up at Ananda Kanan a few months later. Um, and the first day that I got there, I met that Shumit and he said, go take a shower, go take a bath and then come. And he initiated me. And, and that was, from that point, that was like, I, there was no question ever. And, um, and so I lived at Ananda Kanan for three years, um, with, the with the Acharyas and it was wonderful. Um, all the RDSs were there and all the summer retreats and winter retreats. And I was involved in that whole flow and I was just immersed and I loved it. And one of the things that I realized very quickly is Kirtan is singing Kirtan. Um, it was when I, I, and I remember thinking back to those times I was sitting in the park, you know, I, I like, I knew that 
that music was a way that we could connect with God, that we could make that connection. But once I had the mantra, Baba Nam Kevalam, it was like that was the missing link. And, and it was like, it just became my whole life. Um, I remember in the beginning when I first got there, I was really shy and um, I didn't like playing kirtan in front of other people. Um, I only played by myself, but I played kirtan a lot. I would play every day. Anytime, you know, any kind of clash would come or I'd have any problem or I couldn't figure something out, I would go into my room and I'd lock the door from the inside and I would just start playing kirtan. And I realized, and I used to play, sometimes I used to play for hours. And I realized in those, in the beginning, in, in those days that, that kirtan could solve all problems. If I, if I had a problem that I couldn't solve, or if I was feeling a certain way that I couldn't, I couldn't pull myself out of that. If I sang kirtan and if I sang it for long enough and I sang with enough love, all of those restrictions that I felt would loosen and the solution would be sitting right there. And, um, but still I, I didn't like playing in front of people very much. Um, but Baba had a plan. He always has a plan of how, you know, to bring us more into our, into our self and into that divine self, you know, and help us to overcome our complexes. Um, and so he, um, I went to LFT training and during LFT training, um, we, every uh, week we had, um, a Khanda Kirtan and all the Margis would come. And I think I was the only trainee actually at that time. And all the Margis would come and there were all kinds of Margis and everyone would, you know, there's musicians and there were some Filipino Margis there that played Kirtan <clears throat> so nicely. And um, <clears throat> so I didn't really have to play. Sometimes I'd, I would play, you know, for a few minutes. And, um, but one time, nobody who played Kirtan came and I had to play Khanda Kirtan for three hours by myself. And um, <clears throat> I listened to Vashudev's talk and he was telling the story about when he was in front of Baba and the guitar was out of tune and the feeling that he was having inside that internal kind of clash, um, powdering down of the ego. I had that experience for three hours and I remember like I was, I, I was singing Kirtan and like on the inside I was screaming and I was so clashed out. I was like, I felt like every, like I felt like everyone was angry with me because my kirtan was so bad. And I felt like, like, like my rhythm was off and the drums couldn't, couldn't sync with my playing. And I was just like, in, in my mind, I was just yelling at Baba for three hours. I was so mad. And, and, uh, and it was just like, it was, it was so intense. I felt like, I was just being pulverized and, um, and it was so amazing though, because, because after that experience, I started playing in front of people for the first time. And, um, and I started to love playing in front of people and with people and with other musicians. Um, and it's not that, you know, all of my insecurities were all of a sudden gone, but they were just, it was so loose. It was like, there was space in between everything. And I was able to really just embrace the journey and, and throw myself into situations that were difficult, um, and have that feeling of surrender. Um, and so, so after, after about a year, I moved to Europe and I lived in Europe with the Martys for, for about four, four or five years. I had a lot of really nice experiences in Europe. Um, I won't get into, I won't go into details with that right now, but, um, it was a wonderful time in my life. 
and really, you know, on so many levels deepened my experience of like kirtan and, and doing kirtan, you know, with large groups of people, um, for days, you know, and, and, and just so many really amazing memories. Um, but I remember I was, um, I was doing meditation one morning when I was living in Europe, I was in Sweden and, um, and during meditation, all of a sudden, it was almost like I wasn't thinking it. It was being kind of downloaded to me. I was doing meditation and I felt I need to make a kirtan CD with my friend Alex from high school. And it was so strong, but I had, I didn't have any connection with, I hadn't spoken with Alex for years. And I, and I didn't know what he was doing. Um, I didn't know where he was. And, um, and then just, I was in Europe for about five years and just before coming home back to Canada, um, one data told me, he said, your brother's an LFT and he's, he's really strong Margie now. And I said, my brother, that's so weird. I've got three brothers. And I was, I remember trying to think like, cause I hadn't, spoken with my brothers in a long time either. And I was thinking, which one of my brothers would, is a Marty now? I, I could, like I was trying to think, is it Chris? No, I don't, I don't think so, but maybe you never know. And, um, so anyways, I got back to Canada and I can't remember how it happened, but I found out to my like delight that, that Alex is, was Jagat he got initiated and he had been living in Toronto with the Dadas and was running and silver and had been a Margi for, um, since I had left actually. Um, and it was funny. It was all Baba's Leela because the, the, um, just the week before I was leaving for, um, for Sweden, I had, I had to drop a car off at, at the master unit in Ottawa and, and on my way home after dropping the car off, I missed my bus connection in Toronto and I had, and I had nowhere to stay. And so I started calling old friends from high school to see if I could find somebody. And the only person I could find that I could stay with was, um, my friend Ocean. And so I went to Ocean's house and when I got to Ocean's house, I realized she had to go out and she said, I've got to go, you know, for classes tonight or something. Um, but do you remember Alex from high school? He lives, he lives here now, um, with me and you can do meditation in his room. And I remember I went in his room and I meditated and I felt such a vibration in there. And, um, and I remember he had all these like orange dots all over the room. Um, and, uh, and he had like black lights on and I was meditating in there and it was like really cosmic. And he came back that night and I remember, and this was just before going to Europe and I, and I talked to him about Ananda Marga and I gave him, uh, I think one of Didi Ananda Mitra's books. And then I left and then I had no contact with him. And then years later, five or six years later, I come back to Canada after being in Europe for all those years. And he's a really strong Margi. And that's when we started Soja. Right when I got back, like days after I got back, um, Rupali from Italy, Jagat Bandhu and myself started um, recording the Kundalini Express, that first CD. Um, I'll tell one more story, which I think is pretty amazing. And then, uh, and then I'll sing a few kirtans. Um, so when we first met, we didn't have a name for the group, for the music, and we didn't want to use our own names. We wanted it to be something more, um, of an enigma, I guess, um, or something. And, um, and so Jagat had a dream one night and in his dream, he was walking down the street and he looked into a record store and inside the record store, he saw Baba was in the record store and Baba was flipping through albums. I think he was flipping through like records and Jagat was like, so surprised what's Baba doing in the record store? And I, th I think I can remember that, that he went in and it was smoky and, and Jagat 
said that like he couldn't believe that Baba was in there because you know it wasn't a really sentient environment and and but Baba was looking through the records and Baba pulled out a record and on the album it said soja and uh I don't remember what else, I can't remember what else Jagat said about the dream but the next day he came to me and he said I got the name it's soja and um and so that's where that name Soji came from. And, you know, and then we just started making music together. And I mean, really, Jagat is the, he's the musical genius behind Soja. He's, he's the one that does all the, the keyboards and the, all the instruments and just brings it to that level um, where it's just sublime. It's so beautiful. Um, and we started, you know, just recording and, you know, and I find for me like tunes, a lot of tunes, they come as soon as whenever we'd be getting ready to do another recording, I would just, sometimes I would just sit down with my guitar and then all of a sudden, like just out of nowhere, just like a tune would just, would just come. And, uh, I remember there's one there's one tune. I'll play one more tune right now. Um, and then I'll tell you the story which has to do with my daughter Lena. That's pretty cool. Originally I played this a little bit higher. Oh, it's guitar's in tune pretty okay, yeah. Hmm. Bye.
that kirtan is called Felix Felicis. And um, we, my family, we've been a huge Harry Potter fan. Um, we love Harry Potter. And uh, we actually watched Harry Potter yesterday for my birthday with my daughter. Um, but Felix Felicis is this potion that um, that they give and it's called liquid luck. And if you take it, you just have like the best day ever. Like everything just kind of falls into place and you're always at the right place at the right time. And you say the right things and everything just flows. And I remember my daughter, when she was, she was probably about five years old, she woke up in the morning one day and she said, dad, today is going to be the best day ever. And and it was so amazing because she went out and she had the best day ever. She like everything. She came home at the end of the day. And she said it was so amazing. Like everything happened. Um, like my friends, we were getting along with the friends. We had a great time at the play at the playground. My teacher was amazing, and she was so happy. And I was like, "Wow, that's amazing, Lena. Like you know, you said you were gonna have the best day ever, and you did. And you know what a great lesson that is for you." in life. Um, and then I just picked up the guitar and this kirtan like was, it was like, it was just right there. It, like I didn't even think about it. It came out and it was like Felix Felicis. It was the special kirtan that I love so much. Um, and the chords, actually I usually play it like, with a capo, um, but it's G, D, this is D, you can play it like this also. Ba G D C ba, ba, ba. and then you go back and then Kavalum is C D G ba, ba, ba. And then Kavalum and then the second time you do that instead of going back to the G you go to an E minor so you, and then you go ba, ba, na. Kevalam E minor and then Baba Nam D Kevalam C and then back to E minor again Baba you stay on C there Baba Nam O Kevalam E minor Baba Nam Kevalam C and that's it and then back to the beginning So that's Felix Felicis. I love that kirtan. Um, one of the ideations that I have when I'm singing kirtan, I mean, there's lots of different things. It's like Vashadeva was saying, it's like, there's this internal relationship that we have with God, with the divine, and that can be anything that doesn't have rules, you know? And so I play with Baba a lot when I'm singing kirtan. Um, but a lot of times, I feel like when I'm singing, I feel like he's right in front of me, looking into my eyes and he puts his hands on my face, on my cheeks, and he's just holding me, like holding my gaze. And like from that place, like I sing Kirtan and it's almost like it's it's me and him, it's this relationship. And then slowly, slowly it's like that, he just becomes me. So I become one with that divine entity. Um, and sometimes when I sing Kirtan also, I just feel like it's coming out from my heart. It's just pouring out from my Anahata chakra, just radiating out, just bursting out to the universe and just, just filling the universe just with that radiance and with that love. There's so many, like there's endless ideations that we can have. You know, sometimes I used to make up whole like stories in my mind, like when I was doing kirtan, just whole like scenarios um, and just imagining different things. Um, but that's like, that's a, the realm of devotion, you know, that realm of, of divine love is something that, you know, there's so many rules in life and there has to be, it's important, you know, for us to have rules, to be able to move collectively but in the realm of devotion, my feeling is that there is no rules. It's just you and your beloved. It's just you and God. It's you and love. 
and like through using Babanam Kevalam, it's like you're just putting your arms, the mantra almost just embraces that that relationship and pulls you closer. Um, I think maybe something like on a practical level that I've learned um, from playing Kirtan over the years is sometimes less is more also. I think there's a tendency, and I used to do this all the time and I still do it, but like when you're playing with a large group of people, it's like when you're leading Kirtan is you want to play like really loud, like you can feel all that energy that's that's building you know, behind you and you want to like, you know, really play loud and just kind of project it. But there's this real, there's this magic that happens if you like, if you pull back a little bit with the guitar, you know, and you let it just kind of almost, it's almost like you don't give everything. You just kind of, you hold it back and it's almost like you, there's a dam that's building this energy, this love, you know, and, and you're, you're containing it and, and you're allowing it to kind of to move and to flow and it doesn't all always have to just explode you know it can it can move up it can ebb and flow and as someone who's leading the kirtan you know you can you're almost like a conductor in a sense you know baba's conducting through you of course but it's like you're kind of in that position where you can kind of help to facilitate the movement the flow of the kirtan so that it can start kind of soft and you can feel it. You, it's not something you do. You can, it's almost like something you react to. It's the energy of that love of that, that satsang that everyone creates. That Hari Pari Mandala Goshti, you know, that, that energy, that energy kind of is there and you can feel it if you really tune in and you can feel where it wants to go. And so sometimes, you know, you can feel a slow build and then it just gets to this place where it just releases. But then sometimes you can like, you can bring it back down again and you can just kind of just let it keep moving, you know, um, and yeah, just to really tune in and to be subtle, you know, when you're playing Kirtan really helps a lot. Um, and also like with the guitar, it can be really powerful. Um, and so sometimes, um, sometimes it's good to also like hold back a little bit, like when you're playing, especially if you're playing, I, I've noticed actually playing, doing like live stream stuff. Cause this is the first time I'm doing a lot of this stuff on Facebook live. And, um, sometimes like just playing softer, it actually has more power because, um, the microphones and, um, sometimes they don't. If you play too loud, it, it, it just starts reverberating and echoing and, um, yeah, sorry, I'm getting distracted now. I'm looking for another kirtan to play. So this is, this is one that I really like. It's called Positive for a Change and I'll, I'll play it and then I'll tell you the chords. I just have to check the time. I mean, what time it is, right?
give a love Baba namo 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 give a love so this kirtan is um, C, G, A minor, F, C, F, C, G times two. C, G, A minor, F, C. F C G. It's the first part, and the second part is just F G A minor. Baba namo kiva la. Baba namo kiva la. Baba namo kiva la. Baba namo kiva la. That one's called Positive for a Change. I think Dada Nabanil Nada sings that on the one Soja CD. Let me see if I can... Just trying to read some of the comments. Does anyone have any questions? I've been um, at so many retreats in my life and I've had so many amazing experiences um, that I think, you know, it's really nice like doing kirtan alone. It's an intimate experience, but my favorite still by far is doing it with lots of margis. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, you know, when we can come out of isolation. It's been, it's been such a blessing like, you know, using the internet um, to connect um, with everybody and sharing kirtan and sharing inspiration. Um, and sometimes, you know, we don't even know what's happening with these vibrations. That's, that's the mystery that I love also, is that we don't know the ripples that are we're creating, you know, when we share this um, with this love with everyone. Um, last weekend, we did a regional retreat online and it was the first time I ever did a retreat online. And it was, it was really amazing. Actually, it was such an amazing experience. Um, kind of getting back to Harry Potter and Harry Potter, there's this tent that they have that they use. And from the outside, it looks like just an ordinary tent, but it's a magical tent. And when you go inside the tent, you're, it's huge. There's all these rooms and the kitchen and whatever you need is inside that tent. And when we were doing the retreat, this room that I'm in, this is my meditation room and my little recording studio. I had the live stream on all the time of the retreat and I could hear people like talking and having their lunch when I was preparing meals. And I felt like this room, every time I walked into this room, it was like walking into this magical space that was much bigger than, than this little room. And I, you know, I wanted to share that with, with everyone because I think you know, if you, if you get a chance to organize retreats, don't feel limited by the fact that we can't get together right now physically, because it's powerful. Um, just, you know, microvita, this, this positive vibration, you know, it travels and it doesn't, it's beyond time and space. I think I'm not a scientist, but I feel like, you know, we can share this vibration around the world and through the universe. Um, I think I'll end with one last kirtan and then I'm going to end the live stream.
A lot of people like this kirtan, this one. It's called Siberian kirtan. It's really simple. Kirtan's just A minor, C, G for the first part, and then the second part is just A minor, F, C, G. Thanks everyone for joining me. It's nice to see all these people joining in on this live stream. And hopefully, we'll see each other soon in person. Um, but until then, namaskar. And I hope this helped a little bit. Thanks, namaskar. <laughs>